Well, the low growing willows are inundated, and that species can't survive along that way. So much snow melt is a flowing by that old outlet stream. Well, that water is unusually high. Usually high. Well, now speaking of that old outlet stream, Oh, now speaking of that old outlet stream, that's the bow river. That's the bow, bow, bow river. Yeah, it's a fresh and clean, fast running Rocky Mountain stream. Bow river. Well, now the lake is the headwaters of the bow river. Oh, the glaciers, the headwaters for the lake. From the bow down through the Saskatchewan to the Nelson Well, water's gonna flow to Hudson's Bay. Well, speaking of that old outer stream, oh, now speaking of that old outer stream, that's the old river. That's the bow, bow, bow river. Well, it's a fresh and clean, fast running Rocky Mountain stream. That's the bow, bow river. To Sharp Knives Rock, the garage sale. Yes. What's wrong? No. Um, Are it you was can... Halloween. It was, it's, listen, it's it, was, it was Halloween last night. I can't get it off. I, I, what are you doing after this? Get it off. Yeah. Trick or treat? You know? Um, listen, just pretend it's not there. Nobody will notice. It's fine. <laughs> Welcome to Sharp oh. Knives Rock, the garage sale <laughs> episode. This will probably be the good one. It's not Maybe. off to a good start with the makeup. <laughs> See, it's okay. I got away with it. I didn't mention the war. Um, I went as Kiss for Halloween last night. Did you guys do anything for Halloween? No. Yeah, I took the kids trick or treating. We got a pretty good haul. They were tired when they got home because there was a lot of candy to carry, but. You know. <laughs> um, well, okay, listen. Welcome to Sharp Knives Rock. This is the garage sale episode. This will be the good one. I know it. This is going to be the good one. Uh, we're joined. You can see we're in the, uh, in the old studio. I mean, sort of the new studio, which is our new warehouse. So that's kind of fun. Anyways, this is Ni Knifeware's monthly show featuring challenges, interviews, uh, you know, hilarious jokes like the one about Switzerland we'll be visiting again later, <laughs> probably. Music from Matt Masters, who's just here. And of course, sexy, sexy knives. And this is a lot of knives. There's a lot of knives this year, or this uh, this episode. Joining me, joining me is uh, Naoto Fujimoto, our cultural ambassador. <laughs> he's, uh, he's our sharpening specialist, our steel nerd, and mega, mega knife nerd. Joining us in Ottawa. Do you see him over there? That's Chris Lord. Over here. Yeah. Sometimes That's known me. as Lordy. He is the man. He's the man most likely to put an axe through the wall. That's probably true. He's the most likely to put an axe through the wall. <laughs> and he's joining us from there. I'm uh, Kevin, the founder of Knifeware. And uh, I'd like to say that I think we have the best knife shops in the world. That's, um, you know what? You gave Nauto a really nice introduction. And then well, you just a like, really nice win. and then it's you just, you know, point the anger management issue finger right at me. That's not very nice. Anyway, listen, listen, sorry, I meant to mention as well. That was Matt Masters that opened us up here, local uh, Calgary cowboy legend. So thanks for bringing us in, buddy. 
Uh, we'll talk with Matt in a bit later. And I think he has some vinyl to give away. Is this a true fact? This is a true fact. I didn't make it up. We've got some vinyl giveaway. So there we go. Oh wow. Well, if that may that if you know, if that isn't true for whatever reason, we are giving away something today. We've got a um, we've got this wicked handmade knife from Miyazaki-san, valued at a very large, humongous even, 288 <laughs> Canadian dollars. Um, everyone watching the video. You know, watching live, watching it later on in the week, whatever works for you. Everyone's got a fair crack at winning this knife. Uh, first thing you got to do is like the video, subscribe to the channel, and then we're going to have a few questions throughout the video that come up where uh, you're going to email your answers to tv at knifeware.com, and then you'll get, a, you'll get a chance at this knife for yourself. I think there might have already been a question show up. So <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, maybe that makes it the good one. I think that might make it the good one this week. Yeah, I think today's today will be the good one. This will be the good to, one. Today will be the good Six, one. The sixth episode is the good one. Yeah. All right. Stay well, tuned. We we are giving away this amazing knife as you probably guys uh, saw on the uh, the movie there. This the uh, this the uh, this is the knife here, made by Miyazaki uh, Haruki Miyazaki san from Miyazaki Kajia. He's great. He's you know, one of those young up and coming blacksmith made with the blue carbon steel and soft iron uh, cladding on the outside. He has been working as a blacksmith about 15 years. We did actually, in fact, the interview. He learned most of his skills from the Obasan in the uh, Fukuoka, but at the same time, he didn't stop there. He didn't who's, stop there. Who's Obasan? Obasan, I'll, I'll, let me, let, let, let you, yeah, I'll, I'll explain that later. Okay. But he didn't stop at where he learned the initial techniques. He actually went on and started seeing those different blacksmiths in different regions, getting a lot of advices. And like he, he's like a sponge. He absorbs a lot of different techniques and that skills and knowledge from other blacksmiths. It's got a really nice shape called Hakata. It's like bunka shape, all multi-purpose. It's going to be really, really great knife for anyone who's never, well, everybody. Like me, personally, I would like to use this as well. Um, yeah, to answer your question about who's the Obasan, mm. he is the, uh, I don't know if he's retired yet, but he is the uh, old-ish uh, blacksmith in uh, Fukuoka region in uh, little, you know, where the ramen, very yeah. famous tonkotsu ramen is from. He's been making knives for a very, very long time. He, though, um, you, loves, loves to use a, this steel called yellow carbon steel, yeah. which is a, um, it's not as quite hard as a, a white carbon or this blue carbon steel. But he loves it. And like a lot of blacksmiths that we know, like Andrea san likes a little bit less hard of the steel. One, because it's less likely to chip. Two, it's so much easier to sharpen. Do you think it's easier just to hammer as well? You don't have to hit it as hard maybe, to move the steel around. Maybe too, right? That too. So the he, well, Miyazaki-san learned a lot from the Obasan, but he elevated it. From the uh, from what he learned from Obasan using the uh, white carbon steel, blue carbon steel, and such. So this will be the uh, fantastic uh, knife for anybody who is interested in Japanese knives. Yeah. When are we announcing the winner? So we will be announcing the winner on November eighth, which happened to be a, a first day garage sale, twelve p.m. Mountain Eastern Standard Time. So we'll be announcing it at our live show that's fun i like the live show yeah it's like a, it's like a telethon it's like a telethon that goes on forever and by the end of my my yeah. voice is shot and i'm tired yeah <laughs> <laughs> later on today though we'll be actually uh interviewing the uh, matt masters and much love like garage sale preview you may be able to see well less from that the screen there but the uh, we'll be able to see a lot of different knives here we got a lot of knives here in front of us today and more knives and more knives and more knives so a lot of knives in a huge uh, huge way so uh a lot of knives tuning on that so are we gonna cook any japanese food yes we have something actually cooking right right next to us so we'll find out about yeah, that we'll in a bit i think yeah i'm a fan of garage so i love knife for garage sale right it's my favorite time of year the sale started with my yearly trips to Japan, I'd go with my suitcases full of funky stuff, 
One year I even had to buy an extra, like a wheelie bag, an extra suitcase just to fit all the knives. I came home with about 200 knives in my bags that year. That was wild. Uh, these days, especially with our current pandemic climate, we're doing most of our shopping over Zoom and emails and telephone. So thank God we have these technologies to do it. Um, as usual, expect one of a kinds, special editions, blacksmith experiments, budget knives, scratch and dent stuff, new makers, and something we have a lot of this time is some fun Japanese kitchen gear, mm. as well as the always popular retired sample knives, touched up by our man Naoto here. We should probably get a look at some of these knives, I think. Yeah. Should we see some knives? We should see some knives. What are you excited about for this sale, Chris? I'm I'm really excited about that. Uh, I like those Sunahisa. So you'll see the uh, there's a Nikiri there. Oh, here it is. Here it is. I got one in my hand too. It's a little down here. It looks better up on the big screen. But these are a blue number two. They got a stainless steel jacket on them. So they're quite a bit easier to take care of than just a straight carbon steel knife. And I think one of my favorite things about it is I really like... If you look at this picture, um, the kind of the cutaway of the handle near the back there, I think they're super comfy. It's a nice attention to detail. Well, that's the uh, the other knife that I is showing right now. It's a Shoichi oh. Hashimoto. Look, 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 look. Handfolded oh. Damascus with the white carbon steel, blue carbon steel, and he twists. Shoichi -san, Hashimoto san is a uh, this metal artist, right? So he's making this like crazy pattern welded or the forged welded damascus steels but when it first came out that i, I we weren't expecting that much out of him because well, he's, he's not a knife maker yeah right, right? He's, he's a metal worker so i thought oh the knife's gonna look great mm -hmm. but i didn't think i i didn't think it was gonna be much more right knife. but you know how like from like we have this like right there somewhere uh it's it's somewhere in front of yeah. me here you but the uh, out, when you too. when you look at this though, it's forged really, really well. It's got really nice this little taper, thin edge. So it's like it's going to work fantastic as a kitchen knife as well. It's just a beautiful piece. Here it is. Be oh, fun. there you go. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, I'm I'm a huge fan. I like I said. Yeah. At first, and I thought it was just going to be beautiful, but they're beautiful and really, functional. Really yeah. good knife. Yeah. So check out this handmade beauty. These guys here, this is what, oh, and you can see it on the video there. This is what I'm most excited about and even fits a student budget. So Shindo-san from Tosa is a young guy. He was born in Hokkaido in the North Island of Japan and uh, graduated, or he went to university in Okinawa down in the South. So two different, very different places. And I hear he graduated from university or uh, from high school the year, no, I hear he was born. The year I graduated from high school. That's that's the thing. And uh, I hate finding out that masters, um, that I'm 20 years older than him. <laughs> <laughs> but he was drawn to rugged looking blacksmith knives like the ones we see here um, with the black, the Kurochi mm -hmm. finish and, and still like a rough appearance. So he worked for a larger company, but then he struck out on his own and just in May, 2020. And this one's only 136 bucks, and we have about 30 mm -hmm. each of the Fonyaki and the Santoku. Yeah. So we got 30 Ooh, of each uh, shape, and these are going to fly out of here at 136. Handmade knife for 136, they're yeah. going to fly yeah. on. So what year might that have been, Kevin? We're going to talk about my graduation. That was 88. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, 88. Which, yeah, I don't. Naoto and I weren't very old that year. Yeah. You know, just. Uh, do you know what I really found out, though, that made me sad the other day is that the year 2050 is closer to today than 1990. Ooh. Oh. Yeah. That kind of hurts. Your, memory, yeah. your memories of 1990 are probably a lot different than mine. I was probably drinking a lot more beer at the bar than you were. <laughs> yeah, I was probably watching a lot more Thundercats than you were. <laughs> likely, <laughs> likely. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, <clears throat> so we've got a bunch of other videos coming up this week as well. Um, as we get, you know, we hinted at some of them, but here's a couple details for you. Um, as we get closer, we're going to do a, a preview of the garage sale knives on Friday afternoon, 2 p.m. Mountain Time. That's 4 p.m. here in Ontario, if you're a little closer to me. That's a great opportunity. We're going to show off a, a bunch of stuff. 
Um, you can ask some questions, Kevin and, and the crew are going to, we're going to show off our favorite stuff, right? What should yeah. you really keep an eye out mm -hmm. for? Um, on Monday, we're calling it our telethon here all day long. Um, we're going to have the cameras rolling out of the warehouse there. You're going to get to ask, um, can I see this particular knife? What, how much does that knife weigh? Where does it balance? You know, Kevin's going to have a scale, a ruler, even some little calipers kind of, you could tell, like, get like the really, really nerdy measurements. Like yeah. how, how thick is it at the, at the heel of the knife versus the tip, you know, whatever you need to know. Um, we always do that. It helps the, uh, it helps, it, it helps all the online shoppers find the knife that's perfect for them. Right. Yeah. So we can, you know, okay, I really want this one, but I want one that's a little bit heavier. Can you help me out? That's easy stuff. It goes all day. We're going to start at 8 AM. So when the sale goes live online, um, and then run for as long as Kevin's still standing. So then a uh, couple days later, because this happens every year, but on Wednesday, the 10th, starting at 4 p.m. in Alberta, we are going to uh, do like a little kind of catch up live event because we're expecting a bunch of new stuff to show up. It happens every year. You it know, garage sale starts on Monday, a bunch of boxes show up Wednesday, Thursday. So we're going to have some new stuff that you might not have saw in the previous videos. And again, ask a lot of questions and, and figure out when uh, kind of what you want, where it is. It's a lot of fun. It's, I don't know, it's a lot yeah. of fun for me. I like being part of that. Uh, you know, that in our last show, Chris, we were talking about music and we asked, <clears throat> excuse me, we asked people to send us songs to add to the knifeware cooking playlist. Well, it's live now. It's got 129 songs. You can click the link in the description to listen. And I don't know if you've given it a listen yet, but it is, um, it's clear. Eclectic. It's clear that 129 people got together and didn't discuss yeah. anything and made a playlist. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There's a little bit of something for everyone. But yeah. <laughs> I skipped a bunch myself. You know, I'm pretty picky. You know, if it didn't come out when I was in high school or earlier, I probably don't like it. Just I thought kidding. you chose the Lady Gaga. Yeah, yeah, no, that was me. Yeah. Well, that's how young I am compared to you, Kevin. Lady Gaga did come out when I was in high school. I don't know if that's serious or not. You'll never know. <laughs> it probably is. I'm just not without a Google search. I don't know if she was or not. Well, look, we've got some music for you to cook to. All right. We're going to give a knife away. That's fun. Um, but one of the big things around garage sale is like, yeah, obviously there's a ton of knives and that's what brought everybody here to watch this video today. Right. But we got all kinds of other stuff too. Like there's always like little gizmos and, and gadgets and other kitchen stuff, uh, that I get pretty, st I, I, I get excited about, you know, uh, it's a lot easier for me to treat. I don't get in trouble if I bring home a new pot. I get in trouble if I bring home a new knife for some reason these days. Did you um, say you don't get in trouble if you bring home pot? I said a pot. Oh, a pot. pot. So it's going to say it's Canada. It's legal. <laughs> it is. Yeah. Yeah. It's 2021. 2021. But we got all kinds of other stuff. Like we've got like these cool mortar and pestles. And we've got, we're going to talk a little bit more about something like this later. You know, I'm pretty excited about those. Um, but the then we've got thing? the weird got thing. the weird thing there? The thing I'll I have the weird thing when we're done after. I don't have it right here, but I'll have it in a minute. Okay. Um, but then we've got something that's pretty cool. I didn't really know much about. Um, it's called a furoshiki. And so we made a little video kind of explaining what those are all about. I think they're going to be really popular this year. So I think we got a video. Someone should probably turn that on. Hi. We just got a really exciting piece of fabric called furoshiki. This is a, I would consider it as ultimate multi-purpose piece of fabric you can find. Here's why. This piece of fabric is originally invented and used for a piece of fabric to lay down in the public bath. Nowadays though, people use this to wrap a gift or use it as a bag. So I'll show you a few different ways to wrap your gift. When you get a knife, it'd be very nice to wrap in really nice piece of fabric that can be reusable. So I laid that knife box 
in front, then wrap them very nicely. Roll a few times. This is very simple. A few times, then left on top, and this one goes on top. So it's nice here. Alternatively, you can cross, flip, then tie. You can do this way as well. Even if you get the bigger box wrap, don't worry, this wrap is big enough. Here, place them in the middle. Then bring the both ends. Left on top, and this again comes on top. This is a beautiful way to present your gift as well. This piece of fabric can be used for so many different ways. You know, Kevin, that would have been uh, useful for me to have when we went to the onsen in Japan. <laughs> That's a much more generous piece of fabric than what I was given. <laughs> what, what are you saying, Chris? <laughs> I'm saying I'm a little bit bigger than a tea towel. And I think I would have been much more comfortable if I had that. Just saying. Okay. Me so this is the uh, piece of fabric that that exact thing oh that's huge it's it's, it's big huge. enough that's it's a, really big for a shiki that's it's great. the uh, hundred times hundred meter by meter this comes really handy if you have this one of one of these things in your bag and if you go to grocery shopping you can actually tie it in a way that it becomes like a grocery bag yeah i um, like that yep yeah. you can actually wrap a something like a bottle like wine bottle wine or two We'll actually are going to make a video on how to uh, wrap those uh, like weird looking objects as well. But do you know what I really like about this too is you don't have to use paper. They just have to be garbage. Yeah. You can use this again and yeah. again and again. Exactly. And honestly, I think the more you use it, the more memories you kind of build up with it as well. This, this I'm, is I'm gonna, a huge fan. This is going to be really great addition to the uh, whatever like knife or something that you're getting for someone else, mm -hmm. right? Because it's it's a great piece. So say, I, I'm just gonna do a really quick demonstration. It's really easy. Even if you have two knives or three, all you have to do is just, you know, put in the mid center that and roll a few times, make sure it doesn't, you know, tangle. Yeah, that, and you can just wrap it the making the leaf knot, reef, reef uh, knot, yeah. So you can, I don't, and it looks cool. Yeah, they look really cool. Like, and again, right. the piece of fab, like this, can be used for so many different ways too, right? So it's um, I think it's gonna be really great, great addition to the uh, the gift, whatever gift that you were buying, right? This isn't a problem for most of the people watching, but mm -hmm. as someone who's worked through seven, this will be my seventh or eighth knife wear Christmas. <laughs> I've wrapped a lot of knives for Christmas presents for people. And, and when you get someone the honing rod, the honing rod doesn't fit in the box with the knife. So you're trying to wrap a knife with a honing rod, elastic band to you rip the paper. It never looks as good as it's supposed to. Mm -hmm. I'm pretty, uh, I'm, I'm pretty excited about this. This is going to make my life a lot easier in a month from now. So, um, but we've got other cool stuff with garage sale. You know, we got the Furoshiki, which I'd never seen before. I think those are really, really cool. I showed you the cool mortar and pestle, you know, little pepper wood. I don't know which one's which. I can never remember if this is the mortar or if this is the mortar. But either way, it's a really beautiful ceramic bowl. 
the mortar is the bowl and the pestle is the the stick is the smasher this isn't the greatest for smashing but it's really good for yeah grinding good for grinding such this is something kevin was alluding to before which i had to make a special phone call to figure out what it was (laughs) i thought it was a uh very large um (laughs) pipe for newly legal activities but in fact is for roasting seeds in like sesame seeds Mm -hmm. So the ceramic is really good. It gives you a nice even heat, which I, I don't know. That's pretty cool too. Look, everyone's trying to get me to show knives. I'm not showing you any knives yet. You gotta wait. You gotta wait a second. All right. And then this is something. Show us a knife. Show us a knife. Show us a knife. No, no I'm not showing you. Look at the knives in the background. There's clearly a couple that are from garage sale behind me. Why are you like this? Well, this is why you invite me. You need someone to be contrary. Um, but then this. Is uh is I get confused all the time about if it's food or the cooking vessel. Nalto's going to explain this to us, uh, but donabe is uh is is a lot of fun, you know. So um you can hand this out. Before earlier we were talking, I thought it would be really good for you know anyone who's kind of into Japanese food or whatnot. Kevin told me I was wrong, and it's perfect for anybody. So if you like some, if you know someone who likes stuff, then you can get them this. I well, guess. if you know somebody who likes food that tastes good, mm, I think that's, that's, that's the true. only thing you need. It's just somebody who likes to make food yeah. that tastes good. Yeah. So I've heard, uh, now I don't know which is which. Now Till's going to explain. I don't know if Donabe is the pot or if Donabe is the dish, but I know that I went to a restaurant in Kyoto with Kevin that specialized in such, but I have no memories of being inside the building. So. <laughs> you have no memory? We had a very fun night. I have yeah, where was, where I remember Shibata leaving. Where yeah, was on that night. Oh, he was in the same same state <laughs> as me, I believe. I carried <laughs> I carried Shibata San around a little bit that day, <laughs> so I don't remember eating it. Our but I'm told it was fun. very good. They're hard work. <laughs> They're hard work. I had to carry a man around town. That's hard to do. That's hard to do. Now, Toe, can you explain? Can you? like yeah. tie up the loose ends that I just left all over the place? Yes. Well, the uh, donabe. We made, a, we made a video, right? But let, let's, let's, let's explain what the, what, right. what the differences are. The uh, donabe is the uh, exactly what the what uh, Lordi had in, in hand. It's a clay pot. Do is actually short. Well, not short. Do means clay or the ah, sand okay. or any sort of stuff, mud. or So clay and nabe is the pot. Nabe can be used actually for a dish as well. We say, hey, let's do nabe tonight. When we say let's do nabe, that means do a hot pot. Right. So um, it's a hot pot dish. Uh, you often do hot pot in do nabe. You make, so you make a dish, nabe, and na do nabe. Does that make sense? Makes sense to makes me. Sense? It seems that there's Like a how you make paella in, you in a paella pan? pan? Yes. Seems there was a hint there. So, that one of the yeah, nabe was spells like N A B E. Nabe. Okay. So, the, uh, we actually uh, prepare some uh, nabe dish in the don nabe. And the, uh, we actually made a small short clip uh, me actually preparing for the don nabe. So, let's, let's, let's see uh, how it looked like. Oh boy, did you see that, Chris? Ha-ha. Yeah, I don't like watching Nauto cut tofu in his hand. I don't like it. <laughs> it's it's very I don't traditional. Know if... but very traditional. Like if you uh, if you see any uh, cooking shows in Japan, that's how they cut the uh, tofu. 
Yeah, Pope traditionally cars didn't have uh, seatbelts either, Nelto. <laughs> yeah. Just saying. You Chris, know, maybe there's a safe... Knife? The last time... Oh, yeah. I think you we're going to say the same thing. thing. You've got that yeah. knife. I've, I've got, got that knife. knife. Nelto yeah. has that knife. Same knife. Three of us have. Yeah. Yeah. The last time I used that knife on this show, I lopped off my knuckle. There was a lot of blood, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> that was a bloody... Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's yeah. better now. Yeah, it's better. Now. I don't ever want to cut tofu in my palm with that knife. That's a kurosa or a sorry, a masashi kuroshu yuto. Yeah, mine's insanely sharp. Oh, it was, it was sharp. <laughs> it was sharp. But the, here's the thing, though, that was really, really soft, silken tofu. So if you you know put down on the cutting board, cut into the dices, and you know pick there's more chance to uh, smash them when you try to pick it up. And so that's really, really common way, especially say when you are making miso soup with tofu in it, especially that soft tofu. Uh, often you see Japanese people have tofu on the paw and they say like see, that. I could get into a tofu knife then. I would just want a tofu knife, a little plastic one. <laughs> that's not sharp. There's actually a tofu knife for the tofu makers. <laughs> Of course there is. Of course there is, right? Of course there is. Well, this magically appeared. The um, we this is the kind of donabe that we uh, nabe dish that we prepared. It's handy. I've got and, my chopsticks ready here too at and, any uh, point. So yeah, we'll we'll probably savor it as we as the show goes on. Well, I'm or we're we just gonna eat it as the uh, dish bit, right? I'm getting ready. I'm getting ready. Wait until we kind of. Be nice if for once you guys included me in this sort of thing. Uh, I will take a portion out of here, Chris, and I'll put it in an envelope, lick it, put a stamp on it. I'll get in the post by tomorrow. Okay. Yeah, please. Yeah. If you could, I'd appreciate that. I'll, uh, I hope the tofu doesn't get smushed too much. <laughs> Listen, did we mention no, Nauto was very careful to make sure he didn't smush it. Yeah. You don't want to ruin did that. We... <laughs> <laughs> did we mention we're giving away a knife? So this guy here, Valued at just uh, just almost three hundred huge Canadian dollars, and if you want Gigantic this cool, even. if you want this cool Miyazaki knife, all you have to do is one, like this video as hard as that might be. Two, subscribe to the channel, and three, you have to answer three skill testing questions. Easy peasy. Uh, all you have to do is watch TV and win a knife. How do you feel about that? That's not too hard. It's easy. That's not too By the hard. way, somebody's calling me. I don't know if you can hear that, but uh, I no. didn't answer. No, it was me, actually. I was trying to mess you up. <laughs> That's smart. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm still upset about this soup thing. So here, look, everyone's still, soup. they're getting so mad at, at us, eh? Like, I don't know if anyone else could see. They're like, show us the knives, the eh, knives. You guys are crazy. You think this is called knifeware or something? But before we get looking at individual knives, all right, um, we're gonna watch a quick little clip about a couple of our a uh, couple of favorite blacksmiths around here. We've got, you know, the esteemed and favorite Katsushige Enru and his nephew Takumi Ikeda. Um, we're gonna watch a quick little video from our film Spring Hammer. Um, I know for a fact we've got a few knives made by those guys, and we'll talk about them a little bit later on. But for now, let's just uh, get a little bit of philosophy going. <laughs> えっと、自分はね、親の代々からあの、刃物を借りだったもんで、その関係でま、後継ぎをして、私で4日してもらったんです。うん。もう当然あの、そういうようなことも目的でね、あの、差し出そういうのことで差してもらったんです。あの、実
、まあ、自分最初にこの職業に就くときに、本当にその職業じゃないといけないのか、本当にその横浜も出ていくんかっていうような言い方をされたんですけど、でこの仕事を含めたんやって言ったら、頑張ってこいやって言ってもらいましたね。そうですねやっぱりせっかくこう長く続いてる伝統なんで自分のたちの代でこう潰すんではなくてやっぱり未来の人にもつないでいきたいなと思います。It's great, great. That's great. I think that's really poignant at the end、mm -hmm. when he says he doesn't want this skill to die out、mm -hmm. with him. Yeah. And it's poignant now because, in fact, Andrew San has kind of passed the torch now on、mm -hmm. to Aketa San.、Yeah. So Andrew San is, is retired. I'm sure his retirement, retired. I'm sure his、yeah. retirement means he goes to the Knife Village every day、mm -hmm. and probably drinks more coffee and does less work than usual. But I'm sure that's what retirement is. I know what Saji's retirement was like. Well, he, so Saji's retirement is he's actually at the workshop more than he was before. <laughs> <laughs> so there's that. Well, I'm just going to go really quick for the addition. It's kind of done. Okay, let's so, see. Let's see. Ooh. Oh, it smells good, man.、Uh, it smells like、oh, it's actually does. That's actually does pretty that good. It smells good. Yeah. But you know what? We should probably give in and talk about knives now. Yeah. Anybody want to do a speed round? I do. Okay. Yeah, I do. We can do、Great. a speed round. If Nathan rolls the video, we can start、All、the、right. speed round. Speed round. We've、Here、got we go. 15 speed seconds.、Round. We've got 15 seconds to talk about each knife we like. Okay. Don't screw this up, guys. Okay. Okay. Because I'm on first. Yes. Nigar Hamono. Now, this here, as you can see, is 240 millimeter slicer sak Sakamoto Takubiki. Takubiki means the front end is blunt or, or rounded like that. This is a massive, massive slicer. If you want to. Well, this is Fujin by <laughs> Kukurasaki. It's got a really beautiful turquoise inlet or the collar. As well, the Fuji means a, a god of wind. Look at that, the, the, the hammer patterns. It's a beautiful, beautiful piece. Okay, quiet now. It's my turn. So now we've got this is made by Anru and Iketa. It's a Hanasuki stainless,、uh, stainless clad blue carbon number two.、Uh, it's perfect for breaking down poultry. That's what Hanasukis are for. And that stainless is going to make it a little easier to take care of. Chimikato, I've got this knife. I've got the same. I've got this knife two times, actually, as you guys know. I've got one with the Western handle, one with the Japanese handle. That's the Western handle. I like this one. It's half wood and half acrylic, but I like to call it either bowling ball or root beer bowling ball. This one's called Kitaoka Matsuba. Matsuba means a, a pine、uh, leaf. s、um, It's a single bevel knife, about 120 millimeter in size. It comes super handy for small detailing work or even just a small utility knife. Oh, it's my turn again.、Um, we've got、uh, from Kitsuke Minaka the ATS 34、uh, 210 Guto. Something cool about Minaka san is that he does all of his forge welding in house and gives the knives a cool little diamond shape so the food falls off it a bit easier. I love that knife. Your turn. Oh, this is the one I talked about earlier from Shindo san. Is, we've got a Funyaki, we've got a Santoku,、um, hand forged from a new guy in Tosa. Watch out for these, they're going to fly out the door. That's me. This new pattern of the、uh, Senko from Yuko Saki san, new pattern of the、uh, hammers, right? This one, one here is 270 millimeter, a Gyuto Kiritsuke with the beautiful ironwood handle. It's like really nice piece right here. So apparently, Shirogami number one is Naoto's favorite steel. Sharpens up really, really awesome.、Um, Sakai san here also forge welds everything in house, like Minaka, but his knives are super cheap 216 bucks for a 210. Tadakoro san is famous knife sharpener. And if you can see how high he's ground that blade, that makes that a laser beam knife. This is so. That's a technical term we use in the industry. It cuts like. This particular knife is made by the same guy we are giving the knife away, the Miyazaki san. This one, though, has the stainless steel cladding on the outside, so you don't have to worry too much about rusting. It's just really, really great. I think it's brilliant. So, here's another one that we would call a laser. You know, people say, I want a laser. They mean a super thin, super light, ultra sharp knife. So,、um, another one out of、uh, Hado Sakai. There's some newer knife makers. We've been really happy with their stuff. This is a weird one. This is a single bevel Kiritsuke tip Guto. So, yeah, you see that? The back is hollow. 
So this is a really strange knife and I think fun. I don't have a knife like this, but I'd like one. I think this is my next thing. This one here, VG10 stainless steel and beautiful Damascus look. 150 mil petty is a really great utility knife. Look at a handle, it's really nice and smooth and it's pretty durable. It's really nice. Uh, so these knives, the Sakai Kikumori Nishijis, were really popular in the last black uh, garage sale, especially with our uh, with our staff. They're really tall. They got the stainless on the outside, easy to take care of. Uh, yeah, they're incredible. I want that knife. Another knife from Sakai Kikumori. Um, this is important to know. Toru that used to work with us, he's back in Japan and he's sharpening knives for these guys right now. So I know that's going to be sharp. Another one by Toru and Miljin. The uh, look at the uh, look at a Damascus pattern looking knife. It actually not a uh, Damascus look. It is the steel flow that actually showing up on the uh, blade. It's beautifully, beautifully done. The um, I'm excited. Oh, too too long, Nelto. So Makoto Kurosaki is you Kurosaki's older brother. He's making these out of VG7. So think VG10, all right? Very, very similar. I'd be surprised if you could tell the difference. But that's a big knife for a little price tag. Masashi, our buddy, has made some of these 270 millimeter Sakamoto Tabiki with Saya as well. So if you're looking for a slicer and you want to show off a bit, this is, this is an excellent way to go. Another one with the very interesting handle by Nigara-san. It's got a really nice acrylic type of looking handle with i think actually like introducing 150 mil petty a lot but this these comes very very handy for detailing work and this knife's going to fly out of here we've got one of these for the sale it's 3500 dollars, as you can see it's from uh shochi san who's famous famous uh metal worker famous damascus steel worker and i love that knife yeah, it's, Naruto, it's, I love that knife. I want one of those knives. I don't have one. <laughs> I want one. So there's that. Anyway, that was crazy. Guys, good job. You, you all managed to knock yeah, each other's uh, feet there. Now everybody's seen some knives, which is good. But you know what we need to do? We need to, well, I guess I have to address this first. In the past week, we had an email from someone who said that your videos are just trying to sell knives. <laughs> And I'd like to point out that we don't just try to sell knives on our videos. We also try to sell other cooking equipment too. So here is a word from our sponsors. In Japan, the hand can be used just like a knife, but the same can't be said about a tomato. That's why we use the gyudo. Don't just cut it, gyudo cut it. Gyudo. Introducing the knife no kitchen can do without. It cuts meat better than an electric knife. It cuts through broccolini like cotton candy. It can cut through onions, garlic, and fine herbs, and still cut through a tomato like this. Gyudo. A gyudo slices. A gyudo dices. A gyudo cuts through parsley, sage, rosemary, and thyme. How much would you pay for a knife like this? Before you answer, it's made from a real VG10 steel. The steel made just for knives in Japan. Gyudo. A gyudo cuts meats. A gyudo cuts vegetables. A gyudo cuts limes for margaritas. Let the fiesta begin. A gyudo slices through paper or a piñata like it wasn't even there. But wait, there's more. A gyudo cuts carrot rings and carrot sticks. It juliennes carrots just like a French chef does. It even makes carrot sticks for dipping. And speaking of dipping, do you like guacamole? Well, a gyudo can even cut avocados for guacamole at your Super Bowl party. A gyudo cuts chicken and even fish. Yes, fish. Try that with your knife at home. And that's not all. Gyudo, the incredible knife offer that won't last forever. Sharp offer, sharp value. Here's how to order. Call 1-888-SHARP-KNIVES-ROCK. That's 1-888-SHARP-KNIVES-ROCK. -E Operators are standing by. <laughs> I suspect yeah. if you call that number, you will got no operator. Then no, like nobody no. is standing by. I think it's it's, <laughs> it's got way too many numbers. Maybe there's a few <laughs> extras there. Yeah, I think you know what I'm gonna just I'm gonna get ahead of this a little bit because I know there's someone who's like mid typing right now to point this out, <laughs> but I am well aware that that knife 
is not made with VG10 steel. The knife Mike was using for the whole video, that one is made with VG10. But the one that flashed up, it's not. So I'll just save you, save you the hassle. You don't need to say no snarky comments needed. You know, not going to so read you're saying, so. so what you're saying, Chris, is we actually know something about the knives that we show? I, I like to think that we do. <laughs> you know, who yeah. knows? You know, who just knows? saying. Who knows what's going on half the yeah. time around here? So. Well, the uh, just remind remind everyone make sure to watch our garage sale preview on friday at 4 p.m well 2 p.m mountain mountain time and our telemarathon event on the first day of garage sale the november the 8th the monday will start at 8 a.m this is great time to ask any questions like how thick is the knife how heavy is the knife where is the balance point and all that kind you of know, stuff. Can I see a close-up? Yes, absolutely. Anything like that. We'll Anything like that. We'll questions. answer all the questions there. And also, no, we are going to do a midweek a um, live event on Wednesday of that week at 4 p.m. Mountain Time. For those knives that may come up around a little bit later, uh, we'll show it there or something that left over or something we didn't get to talk about. And at the first day, of the grass sale, we're definitely going to cover that. Um, so, yeah, let's uh, don't miss yeah, those so, uh, miss things. Yeah, if you uh, if you watch any of our videos, you'll know that particularly Kevin and I are really good at staying on track. You know, never, we've got we never a theme. Get lost. We stick to it. You know, we answer all your questions. Uh, we never ramble on about things that aren't important, you know. Um, I'm not sure so if you got that right, which, Chris. I'm not sure if you got that right. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, well, I've watched, I think you do I've a good job. Our show, we did that show, Knife Japanese Knives 101. I've seen that before. Yeah, and, yeah we uh, do that one. one. Time, one time we actually talked about the message, the, the, the theme yeah. of the show. Uh, it took one, us six months time. to make French fries once. Um, but I got a question. You're going you're gonna to chat recipe. with Matt here in a moment. Mm -hmm. You're going to ch chat with the Calgary Cowboy legend, Matt Masters. I think I got that right. Um, I would like to know, during your discussion, Matt knows any uh, any songs by Mojo Nixon? Been on a little Mojo kick lately. I'll Love try. I'll one. try to sneak. I'll try to sneak that question in. Yeah. Okay, here's Matt Masters. Let's, he looks let's like ask. Nacho. Yeah. No, here you go. they're switching. Oh. Okay. Well, no. here. Go 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 go. That was so slick. I don't think we've ever had a smoother transition. <laughs> But Matt's going to eat hey, all Matt. the soup. There won't hey, be any left to put in my hey, envelope. Oh, I, it's, I got my hat on. It makes me look extra tall. Do you, um, Chris Lord, would like to know, do you know any Mojo Nixon songs? Not offhand. No, I'm going to have to up, uh, up my Nixon knowledge. Oh, all you have bummer. to do is bang on the table and yell a bunch. You don't, oh, it doesn't take much. That sounds like me. Yeah. It doesn't. Well, okay. I don't know if that sounds like you exactly, Matt. Anyway, you're a bit of a, you're a bit of a, a cowboy around town, a bit of a guitar player singing country how about call it the calgary country legend you know Matt uh Masters. i'll take it it was uh, it was actually printed in 2005 in a calgary music magazine called beetroot they called me a local music legend so what? i was like okay it's in print it's real now it is real yeah. it's on the it's on the television now and yeah. sixes of people have watched this it's a lot of people for sixes. Matt masters broadcast sixes so tell us how did it start like i don't think you just showed up and went, i'm a country singer well, I mean, it actually started one night, I guess, in Vancouver. So I've been playing guitar since high school, but right. not without, without a vision to really take it anywhere except the living room. And then I was living in Vancouver, you know, college years. And um, me and a roommate decided to stay up all night making fun of new country music because it was so lame. <laughs> we could do that. So we wrote a song that night and then turned out we really liked it. And in the morning, my roommate walked by and said, you should start a country band called Matt Masters and the Gentlemen of the Rodeo. And then he went off to school for the day. And I wrote down the name and I was like, I'm going to start a band with that name. So that, was, <laughs> that was 20, it was 1996 when that happened. That's crazy. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, live shows. Yes. I know you got one coming up and I know you're kind of famous for your live shows. What, like if I was going to go to a Matt Masters show, what am I going to expect? Cowboy hats. That's a given. You're definitely going to see some cowboy hats. These days, the Matt Masters band plays quite often at the King Eddie Hotel downtown in Calgary. We're the house band there for three years. So that's pedal steels and fiddle and a lot of good fun like that. 
you know, mostly what you're going to see is a really well-behaved country band with like, a, you know, an above board show. It's probably a show your parents like. Were you always well-behaved? Yeah, kind of. <laughs> I mean, like there's a, there's the on camera and off camera, you know, and when you're when you're on brand on camera, I'm always well-behaved. Oh, well, there we go. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Listen, it's been a weird year. <laughs> yes. It's been a weird. I don't know if you noticed this. There's a there's a pandemic. There's I've pandemic been going on. Yeah. Has this has this uh, changed anything about how you do stuff? Because I, I reckon, like, I know restaurants, for example, have been hit pretty hard. Mm-hmm. How about how about musicians? Yeah, musicians have been hit really hard too, because of course all the restaurants and bars we used to play in all closed. And so, as someone who's you know family income comes from performance on my side and and some teaching music on my wife's side, um, we lost all our income at the start of COVID. So we had to pivot pretty hard, and we came up with this crazy company we launched called curbside concerts which takes uh performing outside and that's been kind of the well tell us about that because i'll tell you what we you came and played at my place yeah so matt pulls up in a a minivan and then he climbs up on the roof (laughs) he had an amp for his i think it was just a vocal amp though yeah yeah just a cool little battery power and yeah stood up on the top of his minivan and played us a song from the safety of the curbside yeah we sat in the front yard well that was it like when we couldn't perform indoors we had to start performing outdoors so we came up with this curbside concerts idea and i did do the first hundred shows from the roof of my van because i thought i would be further distanced away it turned out that it didn't really make a big difference and so now i'm on the ground for the most part but we're that doing was fun that was fun though. it was lots of you fun. had a stage on the roof of a minivan. i know it was pretty you know it was pretty special it helped us launch the company did you sure. fall off never fell off once no nope. oh. it was uh, well made and designed by a by an industrial so engineer if somebody wanted to book a curbside concert mm-hmm. Could I do it if I lived in Winnipeg? You sure could. In fact, we do more gigs in Winnipeg than anywhere else in Canada. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, it's our number one location. Winnipeg's such a music city. People there are crazy for music. Well, I heard this guy now called Neil Young. Mm-hmm. Have you heard of him? He's from there. That's what I heard. That's right. And not yeah. just him. Winnipeg has like generations of great musicians coming out of there. So Winnipeg, maybe you're in Ottawa. Uh-huh. We have artists on our I got Ottawa one booked. Roster. That's right. Yeah. I got a curbside up. concert booked as of today. Uh-huh. Oh, I know this. I already know this information. Yeah, there's a, uh, you know, it, it, we have operations going from Ontario all the way to, to Vancouver Island because there's out of work musicians everywhere. And now we've managed to coordinate them and connect them through the website, curbsideconcerts.ca. And that uh, helps plug us. In. Yeah, you got to plug it, curbsideconcerts.ca. Um, yeah, and that's where you go. You book a show, you know, you just punch in your time, date, place. It's Uncle Jim's birthday party. You put whatever information in you want, choose your artist, someone shows up and sings you some songs wild i love it i love it you're okay here here's the speed round right. you ready right. this is ready. hard hitting this is yeah. hard hitting journalism here uh star wars or star trek at first star wars but now star trek oh what was the change <sighs> maybe having kids i don't know i just uh maybe it was john luke picard and my commitment to that kind of lifestyle but like <laughs> yeah definitely got star trek now picard lifestyle. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah i'd like to think i'm on the john luke picard lifestyle i mean i'm, I'm on the path at say engage or make it so engage Huh? Uh, okay, Nirvana or Johnny Cash? Johnny Cash. Oh, really? Yeah. Vinyl or streaming? Vinyl, 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 vinyl. Dogs or cats? We have a rabbit, um, but I, <laughs> I would vote dogs. Uh, Guto or Nikiri? Those are shapes of knives. Yeah, I mean, I like a, uh, my, uh, my, the Euro, I think would be, you'd say Euro? How about a Uto? Uto. A yeah, you see, I, I have to admit, I, I'm still learning my pronunciations of the knives in the house. I, I have it on good authority. You bent somebody's knife recently. Well, yes. So <laughs> just to just so no one's like starts throwing knives at their screen. I mean, like I, I'm learning. Actually, still. no. I want people to throw knives right. at their computer Throw screen. your knives <laughs> at their computer <laughs> screens. You know, I'm still learning my kitchen skills. I mean, I, I, I you know, a little bit of insight on in that master story. I did spend some time as a cook back in the olden days uh, when I was still becoming a country western singer. And I also uh, interned for a summer at Heritage Park as a blacksmith. Oh, really? Yes, yeah, so I did spend a summer hammering out to try and make a, I couldn't make anything. That, that's what happened after a whole summer. <laughs> I, ne- I didn't, like nothing that was visibly anything. I couldn't make a straight line or a, a good curve. It's, that's hard stuff. All right. Well, then uh, we won't get you to do that. <laughs> I understand you have something to give away. I do. I totally do. Let what me just have? reach back here. What you have? Well, you asked earlier if I was a vinyl guy or a streaming guy. I'm totally a vinyl guy. So here I have a copy of my newest record, Everybody Loves a Winner, and a copy of my older record, All Western Winners, because I like putting the word winner in my album title. I see that. It's kind of like a subconscious thing. Maybe you start thinking that, Matt Masters is a real winner. 
Anyways, I've got these two to give away to a lucky winner. Uh, what should we do? Should we have a skill testing question? Yeah, probably. Okay. Probably. Can you come up with one? I can come up with one. Okay. Okay, so oh, here's a good one. Here's a good one. On this album, it's an album of covers I did because I didn't write any songs for 10 years because we were having kids and launching companies and all that sort of stuff. That happens. So I made an album of covers, and I sang a great song with my friend Jill Barber on here. It's a song written by an Alberta-based cowboy country legend. Oh. The song is called Someday Soon. Maybe oh. someone might know the author. So if you song. know who wrote Someday Soon, mm -hmm. you can win two records. Two. One person gets two records? Yeah. Oh, man. Yeah, I'm all about, you know, the value pack. That's that's all right. Uh -huh. Listen, Matt, thanks for joining us. Stay Talk tuned. You. You're going to hear Matt sing us out of here on the show today. What are you going to play? Well, you know, I've got this true story song that I think will really resonate with the people. As you were saying, this pandemic we've been dealing with, you know, it's influenced us songwriters. Let me just Is put that it way. a true pandemic COVID inspired song? My masters only ever sings true stories here, Kevin. It's uh, lots of truth. <laughs> Perfect. Well, thanks, man. That's yeah, great. My pleasure. Right on. Well, we'll see you soon. Okay. And we'll get you to play some guitar. <laughs> and then magically we'll trade you with Nauto. Hi. Hey. Hey. It was great. It was a great interview. It was uh, very in interesting stories. And um, there's Chris yeah. Lord looking like he's sleeping. Yeah. <laughs> I wasn't sleeping. I was paying attention. I was trying to look up the answer to the question. I was trying <laughs> to win some answer? albums. You're fired. I don't know much, man. You know, before we got started today, I like I chugged this really big black iced coffee. I'm kind of kind of wired over here now. I'm having a hard time staying focused um so but obviously you know based on matt's answer about knives and and you know this maybe he has or hasn't bent someone's knife recently uh he's obviously been to the stores right he's clearly he has a huge collection you know rivaling that of like i'm thinking of like you know go to the hobbit and you got smog the magnificent sitting on top this big pile of gold that's matt's kitchen Right, fully kitchen Clearly. knives. Well, yeah, fully I, kitchen I, knives. I have the inside you know. scoop that we may have worked with someone he lives with. Okay, she may have worked with Wonderful. Him for a while. That's what I hear. Okay, good to know. Good to know. So <laughs> maybe there is a dragon <laughs> hordes of kitchen knives in there. Um, but he would have got one of those knives probably by coming into the store. And one of the fun things about when you make your way into the store, you know, we got a shop in Vancouver and Calgary and Edmonton and here in Ottawa. We have a sample knife to represent damn near everything in the cases, right? Yep. So when you're looking for a knife, you get to hold them. You, we've even got one for you to try. You can slice a tomato, a potato. It's really, it's the easiest way to learn if you're going to love it or not, right? So, you know, you get to come in, you get to try them out. There are, there are a few reasons that we use both tomatoes and potatoes, right? The um, tomatoes are a great example it will tell you how smooth or how bitey the edge is. You know, it, it needs to be really smooth and it needs to be toothy enough to cut into the tomato skins. That's really the um, most pe what most people think as a sharp knife should be, right? Yeah. Cut tomatoes, like tomato this. But also potato is really, really important. When you're cutting a potato with, say, for example, really thick ax, Imagine what will happen. Like we can sharpen an ax to the level that you can slice tomato. We can thin. sharpen an ax to the level you can shave with. Yeah, but when it comes to cutting the potatoes or any root vegetables, what will happen is that probably ax, little like one eighth of an inch, it starts to split and break the it just, potato. Yeah, it just doesn't cut it. Anymore. Just like it just breaks things. Yeah, even just really thick uh, knives, kitchen knives, thick knives halfway or a little bit more the vegetable will basically give up and yeah. split break cock, sound right that was i don't know where i made that sound noise from That's anyways sound. yeah listen anyways yeah as you know sometimes our sample knives they get a little uh they get a little used and they start showing their age so the garage sale is a great time for us to refurbish our sample knives so we give them to nauto he fixes mm -hmm. them up and then we sell them at the garage sale mm -hmm. for half price or better, really. So Nuts does the work on most of the knives and we've got a little video to show, uh, show what he gets up to. Mm -hmm. Why don't you roll it, Nathan?
I like that video. I like that you get to see all the work that we do to fix mm -hmm. the knives up before we send them off mm -hmm. for the for the garage sale. How many how many stones did you use on that one now, Tell? Six or seven, oh, maybe. God. <laughs> I, so yeah, it was uh, quite a bit. How many did you use to get the knife sharp, and then how many did you use to get it to look beautiful? Because that's two different jobs. Yes, the uh, polishing, like make it look pretty. I use probably four or five to four stones, and to sharpen it was probably two. Right. So it was it was more on that the uh, polishing, and also you sharpen the bevel on the side as well. So it's it's kind of all intertwined, I guess. Yeah. Right, so these knives. Just wanted to uh, let you guys know the uh, these knives. Not only just one knife, but there will be multiple knives. Will be on the uh, website before the garage sale starts. And also have to mention again, we have a giveaway knife giveaway of this beautiful Miyazaki Sans Tsuchime Aogami Hakata, valued at two hundred eighty-eight dollars. All you have to do here is the. All you have to do like the video subscribe to the channel and just answer three skill testing questions that's really easy there have been a lot of like hints here and there if you missed it you can re-watch it don't worry so it's going to be pretty easy so there will be a uh, skill testing questions and there you have until midnight of sunday the 7th of november so it's a day before garage sale starts what I really like about that is that, and you know, this was like Nathan and, and Garbage who came up with this idea of submissions till midnight. If you yeah, guys want to help me, so oh, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. If you guys want to help me give them a hard time, wait until like mid, like wait and like, you know, Armitage probably goes to bed around 10 or 11. Get all your submissions in after that, but before midnight. And he's got a ton of work to do in the morning <laughs> before noon the next day to pick a winner. So, if you know. Well, and it's also a very busy day to shop with the garage sale. The first oh, day. yeah. Like That's it's uh... you, who, whoever's in charge didn't think this through. I love it. <laughs> I love this. I love this chaos. Um, <laughs> So, but okay, but I've got some advice. I'm going to kind of lay the, like, give you a lay of the land for garage sale. Okay. Those refurb knives that Nalto was working on in the video, those are always the first things to go. People are fighting over those. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, what you want to do is you want to get up early and take a look at the website. Okay. The garage sale is going to go live online at 8 a.m. Mountain Time. So, the same time that our video starts going. Which is also kind of fun because then you get to see Kevin scrambling to grab knives off the table as people buy them. I love watching everything go go to shit. It's my favorite. Favorite part about garage sales is everyone running <laughs> you're, around. Like you're going to love Monday. You're going to love Monday. Oh, Monday's awesome. Okay. So, but back when I started at Knifeware, garage sale was a big thing in store, right? The website hadn't turned into this knife monster yet. So... What's gonna? What I'm used to happening now. The last couple of years have obviously changed things. Uh, you know, COVID has stopped people from coming into the shop quite so much. But we're bringing things back to the roots of garage sale here. So all of the stores have got a selection of knives that are exclusive to the shop. You can't get them online. Okay. I'm sorry to. I'm. You know. I just. I'm just gonna be the one to tell you. All right. So what? If I were you, if you live near a knifeware, I'd get up early take a peek online and then head down to the store to see if you can get something different. Cause like it used to be, you'd show up to work, you know, we'd always show up an hour, an hour and a half early to get the whole store ready. But, and you'd have a lineup at the front of the shop. It was like, like star Wars just came out. It was like the new star Wars movie came out and everyone's lined up to get a ticket. People don't do that anymore. It's kind of, it's, the world's it's kind like of lame you, now. It's like when you're trying to get tickets to a Matt masters gig. Oh yeah. You, you gotta sleep outside. Sleep outside for three days. <laughs> oh, yeah. So if you're, you know, head down to the stores, they're going to have stuff that you don't get to see online. You know what? Double dip. I won't judge you. i probably say thank you, you know. But if you're, if you're going to do most of your shopping online, it's really important, especially with those refurb knives. People, you guys, if you were in person, you'd be punching each other trying to get these knives. But <laughs> what ends up don't happening do Please don't is the web. Them. No, well, I said they would be, not that they're don't, going to. Don't come to the shop and do violence. Don't do that. No, don't do violence at the store. Save it for your 
you're typing, I guess. No, um, don't listen nah, to that. Nah, it's, it's crazy. <laughs> it's fun. It's fun. Light it all on fire. Woo. Anyways. <laughs> okay, I'm trying to be serious, but you're not letting me. I'm not. If you're shopping, you've got face paint on. You. Got <laughs> I can't get it off. Well, I can't get it you off. should have thought of that. Maybe happened. you shouldn't use house paint to make a Halloween costume. <laughs> I don't think I did. Um, all right. I Here bought the go. cheapest okay. stuff. Well, that's what happens, right? So if you're shopping online, it's so, and I say this all the time, all the live videos, if you're shopping online for a garage sale, please remember that the website gives preference to the first person to pay for the knife not the first person to stick it in their cart. So if you've got a knife that you can't live without, I suggest making one or two transactions through the website and then send us an email, hello at knifeword.com or whatever, and we'll do our best to stick it all in one box and we can sort out the difference in shipping after the fact. We're yeah. here to take care of you. We're not, gonna, we're not trying to make life difficult, but go for the one you need the most and then go back for the others. That's the best advice I can give you. Yeah. So, and then just send a quick message. Like, put a note on when you mm -hmm. make the order. Just put a note that says, "I've already ordered. Mm -hmm. Please add this one yeah. to the previous yeah. one, two, three, four, or five orders I've already made." Yeah, it, it happens all the time. But the uh, especially some of the really rare, one of a kind, um, exclusive, um, or something super unique could be very expensive. Things can go really, really fast. So if you're eyeing out for those knives, um, I'll show you some examples. For example, you know, as I said, Shoichi Hashimoto, this beautiful Damascus, white number two, blue number two, um, layered Damascus steel, coreless. Uh, this will go really, really fast. Um, this here, another one, very oh, good, good oh, example. Oh, oh. The Yukurosaki Shizuku 450 millimeter um, Sujihiki few available but the i'm i know I those that. goes really fast and lastly we had this one uh, before and they just came back anryu san's a uh anryu hamono i guess we shouldn't say anryu san because the get san that's the uh, 99 percent work uh katsukiri it's the uh um it's breaded deep fried the uh, pork cutlet knife um to cut the uh cut the pork cutlet now after you, yeah. how many of those did we get this we get a five. Oh my god! Okay, those will be gone in the first hour for yes. sure. Yes. So if you if you're into that, make sure you just get on the website early. Yes, that's, I've got one here way. in Ottawa. So just well, you have one on there in the Ottawa. Yeah. So if you're in Ottawa, just make sure you're front line. Yep. Yeah. Each um, each store gets one, and we got one. They're so cool. If you give me twenty bucks when you get here, I'll even tell you where I put it on the table. <laughs> <laughs> Don't listen to him. Oh, God. <laughs> listen, you may have noticed we didn't do Chopstick Challenge today, but don't be sad. Our next episode on December 6th is our Christmas Spectacular, and we have a special peppermint, peppermint schnapps fueled Chopstick Challenge. That's hard to say. Peppermint schnapps fueled Chopstick Challenge. There you go. Uh, <laughs> next year, we want to change the Chopstick Challenge. Because honestly, we made it. We made a game that was fun, but it was really too hard for some people. Mm -hmm. So we're going to change Chopstick Challenge because the Skittles were too hard. So I think we've got some ideas. But if you have some ideas of how you think we should change it, let us know. Send an email to tv at knifeware.com because Chris Armitage hasn't had enough to read yet. So we need to give him more stuff to read. Um, send your ideas of how to make Chopstick Challenge better to him, and we'll take care of that. I have a suggestion. Yes. Can I can I get my suggestion in, or do I need to email it? Uh, well, maybe both if you want to really be heard. Maybe both. Yeah, maybe we just keep Nathan away from any timing responsibilities <laughs> for Chopstick you know Challenge. I think Nathan did a really great job of timing the first time we did it because I beat you yeah. by a lot. Yeah. We even had we even had a we even had a, a an inquiry, and I still won, but then somehow. Somebody changed the number. I side. think you yeah. just like the result, no. not the accuracy. I think that's what you like. Oh, the his result, accuracy was shit. But I liked the result. Yeah, because yeah, I yeah. won. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, I'm just throwing that out there. It might make everyone a bit happier. Because I'm for one, I'm not sad we didn't do it today. You know, every time I see it, I just <laughs> well, that's a bummer. Anything we should know, Chris, before we sign off? 
Yeah, well, we've got uh, we got our giveaway, right? We talked about that the uh, the knife from Miyazaki San. Uh, and how do you enter? How well, do you, you got to enter? I know the I know how to, I know what they got to do. I'm gonna tell mm -hmm. them. I'm gonna tell okay. Them. So, first things first, you got to like the video. I know Kevin has told us all in the past that it's a very difficult thing to do to click on that button. You know, dislike the videos. Don't dislike the videos anymore. It's not funny anymore. Just like them. But if you That's want the knife, funny. you got to like it. Step one, like this video. Step two is to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on any of the other fun stuff we do. There's been some really cool stuff going up lately. Been having a lot of fun. And step three is you need to answer the following three questions. So sharpen your pencils. You got about five seconds. Okay. Pay attention. Pay, Pay attention. Close attention. Oh, this first question's garbage. Who <laughs> I wrote the question is question most great. likely to throw an axe at the wall. Now the answer is obviously me, Chris Lord. But I don't have an axe within reach, and they might. So that might change things. <laughs> second thing. Second question. What is the name of the Japanese dish cooked by Naoto today? It's I'm right here. Confused. We're going to eat it here in a second. Yes. I'm still confused if it's nabe or donabe. I'm pretty sure it's the answer is nabe. Well, you, answer watch. you can yep. watch, go back, and yep. figure it out. Yep, go back and rewind. I can't rewind my life. I can just rewind the video. So... Mm -hmm. Step th question number three is what knife shape was featured in the word from our sponsors? Everyone's going to write down chi 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 chia. That's what they're going to write down. They're going to get <laughs> they're gonna confused. Write down Kinsu. <laughs> yeah. So, okay. You're going to like, you're going to subscribe, you're going to answer those three questions, and you're going to email your answers to tv at knifeware.com. Okay. Um, the draw is going to be made live. I think we said noon mountain time mm -hmm. on November 8th, the first day of garage sale. So that'll give you yep. another reason to tune into the uh, kind of live marathon if it, if it were. And make sure to watch our uh, garage sale preview on Friday coming up mm -hmm. here at 2 p.m. mountain time. It's going to be an ask us anything and it's going to be all the favorite knives. And then obviously, like you said, on Monday at 8 a.m. Mountain Time, we're going to do our live marathon event. Mm -hmm. It'll be the first day of the garage sale, and we'll help you narrow down the knife you want. We'll show you close-up views. We'll have you answer any questions. I'll have a, a scale and calipers and for really precise measurements. Ask anything you want, and we'll give you the answers as best we can. And mm -hmm. give you the, 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 as best we can, we'll give you the experience of holding the knife yourself. Mm -hmm. Which um, which rock star are you going to have your face painted like on Monday? I, it might be this one. I can't get this <laughs> off, Chris. <laughs> so if you know any good ways to get makeup off, please let me know. Because soap and water did nothing. <laughs> soap and water uh, did nothing. Well, like I said, you water did nothing. Yeah. Benjamin Moore is not good for Halloween, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it would be okay. I thought it would be okay. Yeah. thought it would be fine. Well... I think that uh, that will wrap most of our content today. I think the one thing we forgot to mention is that the uh, we are going to have the mid uh, live events on Wednesday at two uh, four p.m. Mountain Time. Right. So uh, those carousel items may arrive late, or those the uh, things that Kay um, left over a little bit, uh, or didn't get to talk about on the Monday of the eighth. So. Just to remind you, the next uh, Sharp Knives Rock Show is on December 6th with the Christmas Extravaganza gift exchange and mint schnapp uh, chopstick challenge. That's, uh, there is going to be a last chopstick challenge that someone had to you know, do the little bit of revenge for. I am training up for it. I am training up for it. <laughs> <laughs> so, hope you watch that the uh, next episode of the uh, Sharp Knives Rock on December 6th. Yeah. And listen, I have a feeling I'm going to have... Everybody. Thanks for watching. Yeah. We're out of here, time, but Matt everyone. Masters is coming back with a Matt Masters yeah. exclusive. Here. Take it away, Matt. All oh, right in there. That's right. This is a COVID true song. I was booking a ticket. At my local travel agent went along. 
him a voice from my very own government and said, buddy, you rolled off on that little trip that you had planned. It said you can't go there, that border's closed, there's COVID in the land. I can't go nowhere, man. I can't go nowhere. No, everybody's scared with that COVID in the air. But I know we'll do our share. We won't go nowhere. Can't go to Afghanistan, Nigeria, Armenia, Azerbaijan, Bangladesh, Burundi, China, Colombia, Central Africa, Republic of China, Galuda, the Iraq, Rana, Pakistan, Rwanda, Senegal, Gaza, Dan, Mali, India, Sri Lanka, Indonesia, and thank you, Nigeria, North Korea, Israel. I can't go nowhere, man. I can't go nowhere. No, everybody's scared with that COVID in the air. But I know we'll do our share. We won't go nowhere. Can't go to Somalia, the Jigstan, Myanmar, Pakistan, Gaza, the Ivory Coast, Lebanon is going on the UK, the Eritrea, Camden, Richmond, Clinton, Detroit, Detroit, Michigan, Young Street, North Van, Britain, Youngstown, Monterey Park, Temple, Ottawa, After Dark. I can't go nowhere, man. I can't go nowhere. No, everybody's scared with that COVID in the air. But I know we'll do our share. We won't go nowhere. And it's true, folks. Cause I don't go nowhere, no, no, I don't go nowhere. I just sit down in my chair and then I drink a gluten free beer. Yeah, you know, I'll have my share. I don't go nowhere. I go to Calvary, 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 Calvary. I don't go nowhere. No, I don't go nowhere. I'm gonna sit down in that chair and practice my chopsticks over there. Yeah, you know I'll do my share. I won't go nowhere. going nowhere. Thanks for watching. Hey, Lordy, you sticking around? Well, it looks like Nathan forgot to turn it off. Who's still on, though, right? Eat some nabe? Yeah, I'd love to eat some nabe. Are we still I will on? mail you some nabe. Are we on live? Uh, yeah, they didn't turn like it off. On live. Oh, okay. Sure. You know what? Here, you know what? So oh, he's just gonna keep going. Oh, here. Hey, dish bed. Oh yeah, now it's the dish bed now. Look at that. Boom. Yeah. Oh, perfect. Perfect. <laughs> oh. You know what? If we're gonna stick around and eat nabe, I wish we had a beer, but I don't think we have any. Oh, there may be some. And, oh, I'm uh, sure uh, someone's maybe, there maybe to bring you a beer. Was there any was there any comments or questions we should get to? Well, Looks there's like a good one Thelius here. Said, I'm glad Kevin didn't dress up like Peter Chris because nobody wants to to be Peter Chris, not even Peter Chris. That's that's hard. Can you imagine? Can you imagine being in the band Kiss? Okay, and you got, you know, you got the the Star Child like you. And you got the Demon. What was what was like Ace you. Freely? I can't remember what Ace Freely was. The Spaceman or something like I that. I don't know. And then someone paints your face like a kitty cat. Yeah, like everybody's that's not cool. Fair. And then like, the, like the one guy's a cat. That's not cool. Has, like, yeah, but it's like, but it's like if like my children a put a cat makeup on them. All right, just lean in here. This is Matt Masters leaving. Yes, unfortunately. Oh, later. Masters. I got a meeting. I got to go to. Oh, this curbside Matt, before you go. Yeah. Before you go, real quick. When I was a kid and I first heard like, you know, well, the Johnny Cash version of I've been everywhere yeah. because like, I'm in Ottawa. I was always like, oh, wow, he's been to Ottawa. You know, like I thought that was really cool. And then as you're singing, obviously, there's some connections there. You're singing your song. And I had the same moment. I was like, oh, he said Ottawa. That's nice. It's just <laughs> the same you. thing. <laughs> yeah. I don't usually say Ottawa. Usually I slide in some kind of, well, I usually hit the locality where I am on that last line. And then, uh, mm. but it, yeah, you know what? I, I no felt, what I felt special. <laughs> you made me feel <laughs> special. No, I no idea. Warehouse. Yeah, no, I was like, like I know how to get there, but I don't know where it is. It's called the warehouse. It's the yeah. warehouse. Yeah. yeah, it's just warehouse. You just go, you go, you go to where they change the poo water into river water, and then turn left, and that's where we are. Mm -hmm. That's where you are. It always. That's how good. I got there. Yeah, I know the bike ride's the worst. <laughs> you have oh, three kilometers of. Three kilometers of riding past the stink water. <laughs> super gross. Well, this has been super great. The office is gross. Oh, good. Yeah, thanks to this guy. Nice going, buddy. Nice to see you. We'll yeah. see you again. I'll and see you Friday. All the gates, you guys. Holy, like it's nice of you're here.
your team to go and put the gigs. Yeah, yes, we yeah. sell everybody. We uh, for all of our stores and for all of our the warehouse and everything, we've booked uh, Matt or or somebody from. Yes, I can't get to Ottawa myself, but it's all about. No, the but we've got there. Lynn. I listen to some yeah. of Lynn's stuff. Sounds awesome. She's awesome. Yeah, she's totally great. So it's, it's yeah. Nice no, to, we're uh, super nice excited out here. Perfect. Okay, you right. guys. Gentlemen. See you all. Soon. Yeah. Thank you. I was told uh, we couldn't do chopsticks because you were going to be embarrassment. You were going to be. Oh, these no, are no, mine. I can't pick. I'll pick up this cute little thing here. So I'm not like maybe the world's greatest at chopsticks, but you know. Oh, oh you did, you? You're, I, I, I was I, lied to. I we were told totally not confused. to do. I'm very comfortable chopsticks. Here. I've, I think I've started a, a family moment I'm here, your house. Talk to that wife. Over mm. <laughs> I think she was just angry that you had just bent her, her knife. Can you write a country song about that? Oh, I bent the knife. She said I can't use chopsticks no more. <laughs> <laughs> I'll work on it. Okay. All right. Uh, thank you. Hey, yeah, you no, that was fun. To answer his quiz question oh, was it that fast? Yeah, it was real quick. Wow. All right. Yeah, I would like some, please, Nelson. Yeah. Thanks, man. Well, anyway, here. Is there anything we should talk about? Well, here, why don't we blast through a bunch of questions? Yeah. You know, now token dish up dinner. So our pal John May wants to know if there's any Moritaka Algami Super Mega Nikiris. Now, John May's been after that for a while because I've even got an email in my inbox from him about this, and uh, we still don't have one yet. But there's a, I see the Mortaka order has come in. So it's actually sitting beside us. So it might, there might be, that might be in there. What's that, Thanks, Ponzu? Nato. What are you doing? He's put a little Ponzu on there yeah. to make it taste good. So this nabe dish is the, uh, specifically it's called Mizutaki. It's very simple. It's got a kombu um, dashi that is pre-made here. So it's just kombu? Water and kombu. And oh. I have the um, I have the chicken, so it's got a little oh, the flavor. Got a flavor. Yeah, yeah. Uh, looks like Ariel's asking, "Are you broadcasting in Vancouver?" Um, I think there might be two questions. I don't know. We're broadcasting from Calgary to every single place in the world. <laughs> yeah. Anyone? So anyone who clicks on the button? Oh, here we go. Ben is asking. They want a two ten S two two Juto. Would you rather own a Shibata Kutetsu or a Nigara? Well, well, I got both. Yeah, I was gonna say, why not both? I have a 210 Kotetsu. I really like the Nigaras. They're kind of they're different knives, in my opinion. They're both very thin, mm -hmm. but I don't know. I kind of I want both. That's not the answer he wants. He wants me to tell him which well, one. Well, I'll tell you what. I've been using my Nigara almost exclusively now for the last month. Mm. I'm, uh, I'm a huge fan. You know, listen, you know, Shibata-san and our buddies from way back, you know yeah. how I feel about his Kotetsu knives. I love them. Yeah. But my newest my newest favorite right now is that Nigara. It's just something. It's so thin that when you, like if you, yeah. if you are rough and you scrape your knife on your cutting board, don't get that knife. Well, don't get the Kotetsu Nigara. either. Nigara-san. Yeah, though, I guess. The, um, he actually changed the bit of the way he sharpens so the uh it gets a little bit more stronger oh yeah yeah because i've actually chipped mine yeah you Me. probably can i yeah. know something like... about knives and i've chipped my nigara knife so i got a little wiggle in it mm. happens mm. oh cloud bursts wants a t video tour of the new digs the new warehouse here it is it's behind me yeah you see a bunch of kangaroo stuff behind us there yeah there you go Warehouse. Maybe one if day. Lucky, Maybe I might, we can do that. In the bike from. Yeah, that'd be funny if you had like a GoPro on your bicycle and you just rode it through the uh, warehouse. Well, you know that Nathan and Tiffany and Brenda all ride their bikes yeah. here quite often. And Brenda's got a new electric bike, so I think her and I are going to have bike races through here. Because I've got this bike here. Maybe I'll get on my bike here and I'll show you what I've got. It's not that penny farthing, I hope. I don't think you'll win that. Oh, oh, shit. I thought it was going to be a real bike. This is a real bike? Yeah. No, that's a real. trike. <laughs> I'm just going to go for a little warehouse ride. Bye, guys. 
All right. Hey, Nauto, our Hello. buddy Adrian is wondering yep. if there's any Denkas. We got any Denkas in garage sale? We like raw handles. That's a little bit out of the, um, whatchamacallit, the uh, old, like regular lines with the old yeah. handle. But that's that's yeah. pretty much it, though. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's kind of par for the course. Yeah. Fujiwara just likes doing what Fujiwara does. Mm -hmm. um, um, so I was asking, if, is Masakage included in the garage sale? I'm good. You know what? Let me just give everyone a bit of a rundown as to mm -hmm. how garage sale works. It's not Makes necessarily, sense. it's not everything is cheaper all of a sudden. The way garage sale works is that Nauto and Kevin thing? have worked really With hard bike, over the last six months maker. or so to put an order in uh, with different blacksmiths. Different. So stuff. garage sale is kind of like I've always found it. It's more like record store day where it's about, you know, you kind of get like the budget re-releases or like the super cheap and cheerful knives. You get the super exclusive one of a kind. Bad it's lights. not about just Thanks. marking prices down on everything. But I think in Nauto's pile, I saw um, there's some ma some refurbished Masakage knives. Should I, just I saw those. So if you're looking for something in particular, mm -hmm. you can start scouring the website now. So. so yeah, it's it's really the unique um, knives that we don't usually have them a lot of. Um, like say, Andrew Sun's knives that we we usually have from a Sakagi line that the, um, you know, Mizu and um, Kumo. But the uh, this this time we kind of tried to get the ones that's the uh, Aogami with the stainless clad, um, things like that. Um, we are going to get a few very unique handles. Um, I was going to show the at the our uh, previews on Friday, but we have some one off. Thank you, Nathan. <laughs> one off kind of. Uh, Knives from a um, Sakai Takayuki uh, blade is made by the blacksmith, but the, it's e each individual knives were engraved by the um, this um, Michiko uh, Michiko san from the Sakai Takayuki. She is such talented, um, I guess, engraver. Mm -hmm. She uses just like yeah. you know different types of chisel with a hammer, and we have four or five different unique. Um, one off, um, super unique and great knives. And they're when I was in Butos this time, that's right. Oh, yeah. really? Yeah, oh, that's cool. That's cool. A lot easier to, uh, personally speaking, I, I would have a much easier time buying a Guto than a Deba mm -hmm. because, uh, being a lefty, I don't have a lot of use for a mm -hmm. regular Deba unless I'm trying to cut my fingers off. It's, it's, it was, I, I'm, I'm okay. I like watching. I've seen you do that with a Guto. It's true. <laughs> you know, but sometimes that, that you got to bleed a little to get to the head of the pack, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Looks like Thomas says bring more Takedas and more Takas. And I think we do have some Takedas. Takeda hunting special, knives. Special handles, hunting knives. Yeah. And we've got some more Takas that are Agami Super Ishime. Yeah. Yep. Well, just so, the Honosuke. Well, just Honosuke. Just Honosuke. Just Honosuke. And the uh, Agami Super with Kurochi. Okay. Yep. So there we go. We got some uh, some of that coming for the sale. That's Anything fun. else out there, Nathan, that we need to know about? Anybody want to tell me how to get makeup off? I might mm. actually look. I might actually look like this for the rest of my life. Yeah. <laughs> I got some funny looks on the bus today. <laughs> if you show up on Monday, and you've still got that on, I'll probably just die. I'll probably yeah, laugh so hard. And my heart and I still got this on. I'm gonna cry. Or even I'm like asking, just remnants of it, like I'm you still have, got like a little bit I'm around have like gone the to my doctor areas. And ask for like some kind of skin yeah. peel, medical <laughs> turpentine. Um, Ariel is asking about knife bags or boxes at a garage sale. Did we get any of those knife boxes? I didn't order any. Which one? Knife carrying things for the garage sale. The um, we I, we've ordered those boxes in the past, but I didn't order any this year. Did you? Oh no, 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 not that ones. Unfortunately, no. the uh, the boxes. Um, we do have some unique ones, say uh, West Japan tools. Um, oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Those they are, are good. like not necessarily, but they, they are available. Something that we can't, we don't get like as many of. Yeah. Um, Okayama denim. Um, that mm -hmm. where the Shiba um, is from, like close to where he is, pretty popular for the uh, made in Japan yeah. denim. 
I got a yeah, pair of jeans made out of denim like that. It's like well, bulletproof, stayed, that stuff. I stayed at a little boutique hotel there called Anchor Hotel. This is fantastic, Noto. I stayed at a place called Anchor yeah. Hotel, and it everything was made out of um, salvaged denim that they make in that area. Yeah. It was great. Oh, yeah, it's, it's, that's, it's, it's cool. It's really I really wish that I had something to eat. Um, well, you just planned poorly. Well, how was I supposed poorly. to plan that Nauto was going to be? It's just it seems to be a running theme, you know? Adrian, our buddy Chef Mex, wondering if you'll do a, can you sing him a kiss song? Yeah, you know, Matt just took the guitar and left. Yeah. But, uh, uh, shame. You know, so when I first started working here, I uh, um, you're a big fan of sorry. a musician named Destroyer. Sorry. sorry, do you actually work? Yeah, hanging oh. out with you is a lot of work. It takes a lot of effort. <laughs> That's a treat. Don't turn the lights off on me, you dorks. I'm still working. Holy shit. Oh, they got food for me, though. My staff brought me donuts. Oh. Are they nabe donuts? No, it's not a nabe donut. <laughs> well, I will eat it. Have you ever, have you ever well, felt anyways. the desire to rock and roll all night and party every day? Mm, sometimes. Not so much anymore. Um, but what I was going to say is you like the musician Destroyer quite a bit. I do. And for the first and 40, week that I worked at Nightfloor, yeah, well, I like that one album now. But for the first week I worked here, you kept talking about putting Destroyer on. I was convinced that you meant the Kiss album. <laughs> very, very different music. Um. Sapphire, Sapphire Shauna or Sienna, depends on what part of the world you're from, is asking Nauto, what did you rub into the plate so that little, uh, you had the grater going? Oh, this so here. She needs to know that it's not quite a plate, it's a grater. Yeah, it's a ceramic uh, grater. Hey, um, it is under a, uh, I'm sure it is under a ceramic grater. If you uh, search that on our website, it will uh, show up. It's great. It's got. It is made with ceramic porcelain, right? The this is actually yeah, exactly right. this here, and it's got the little humps, bumps, and you grate your. Uh, I did the daikon radish, but you often the uh, you do um, ginger, garlic, and yeah, it gets really nice. And it, it was it works so much actually better than I expected. Well, I mean, like I I knew it's gonna work, oh. but it worked. Really well. I, I love them. And you know what? You can do ginger and garlic and yeah, daikon yeah, yeah. in it, but you can also get creative. I've done yeah, lots yeah. of apples and pears oh, and yeah, just yeah, mix yeah. that into yogurt, things like that. Yep. Delicious, man. So good. Nauto, this is really good. It's actually, It has <laughs> a good flavor. Mm -hmm. Adrian is pointing out that I once set off the fire alarm in the store. That is true. I have done that. <laughs> Thanks for bringing it up. <laughs> oh, Don Penny grabbed a good quote out of today's show. Traditionally, cars didn't have seat belts either, Nauto. <laughs> I think I was talking about you cutting di or oh, tofu yeah. in your hand. Oh, ah. and Yotam said that they did come to see Nauto cooking. Well, that's nice. There you go. That's nice. Nauto, you are more important than knives to that person. <laughs> well, if you want this recipe, this is actually... It turned out pretty good, right? Yeah. <laughs> Jean-Francois, yes, it is. The Andrew San yeah. Captain Kitty will be part of the garage sale. Yes. Online and every store has one too. Yeah. Mm. Here. John's John asking about the same knife. John made there's five of them, one at every store and one online. John's in Calgary, I think. I know he is. Yeah, you should John head down to the shop. You should head down to the shop, John. That's the best way to get it. What about the 400 millimeter Nikiris? We got a few of those, eh, Nauto? Yes, we have a few, yep. Yeah. Same story. Again. Yeah. Ah, uh, so sure. Yotam is asking, what would you use a 400 mil Nikiri for anyways? Capers? You... <laughs> Thin slices of garlic? Yep. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah. And anything, anything as small as a caper all the way up to uh, watermelons? Oh. <laughs> pizza. Nikia Kasumi uses pizza, Kasumi's pizza. house. Yeah. 
I can eat another donut because I'm so hungry. We need to play ping pong with that cat security. We need to make the most ping, the mm. most dangerous game of ping pong ever. <laughs> that they said hunting man was the most dangerous game. Oh, look what John May has to say. He says the Mugen AS Nakiri that Nauto refurbished into a Bonka last garage sale is getting daily use oh. as a do everything knife oh. that just no sits on my cutting board. Thanks, Nauto. Yeah, no, no problem. I remember fixing that for the last one. It was, uh, it was a little bit of work. But now we know where it went. Yeah. Mm -hmm. went all the way to, it went all the way to Calgary. Great. Is there any more messages? Any more things? Oh, yeah. Are the refurbished knives available in store or only online? Both. It's actually pretty good. Uh, here, here's a question. We ever be carrying any Hitohiro? That's funny. That's that's kind of a strange question. Well, that's because that's just a company that buys knives and puts their own name on yeah. it. We, so, yeah, we, have we, carry, we carry lots of knives that yeah. are from the same blacksmiths. We just don't put our own name on it. Yep. So that's what they're doing. Uh, and Sakai Kikamori Choyo knives. Mm. What's that? Choyo is the, uh, we had one or two before. It's it's basically, though, if you look at the Choyo knives, it's basically the same as a um, some other knives that we have. The blacksmith. The uh, Choyo knives are forged by a um, this Tanaka-san. The uh, Gin-san is forged by a uh, Nakagawa-san. But the Choyo's a, um, two lines, the carbon steel lines, are forged by um, Yoshikazu Tanaka-san, which is basically the same as Hado. Oh, OK. And the, um, yeah, that's one of the reasons. <laughs> the Choyo is great. It is. Um, but we so, buy them through Hado. Yeah. Hado does the. Um, there you go. Hado's good. <laughs> I love how Mariyama san does the uh, sharpening. If you ever want to know how, uh, what his story is about, you can watch our uh, interview with Mariyama san. Mm -hmm. Also, Miyazaki san's interview. We do have the uh, both three young blacksmith interview, but we do have the interview piece that includes Miyazaki san, Manaka san, and uh, Nigara san. All in Japanese, English sound. All right, Andrew M. Is the only way to know what's in store for the garage sale to go to the store, or will there be? Oh no, it's just to go to the store. I think. You know what, Andrew? I'm gonna be. I'm gonna be completely honest with you. I'm not gonna know what's gonna be in the store until Friday, most likely. Usually, when we're getting ready for a garage sale, because like there's always stuff like showing up late and whatnot. I don't know what I have, really, like until like I can be like super reliable than like the weekend prior well, so um your best bet is just come on down that's the best best way to go about it yeah simple <laughs> inexpensive no well, i know this troublemaker kevin you've got a uh, you've got a request to ride the penny farthing to ottawa to deliver <laughs> a knife to a gabriel mccaffrey there's this guy i know in ottawa Gabriel McCaffrey, I like him. He's a tr he's a troublemaker. And the, next, and the next time, oh, I like troublemakers. I've been accused of being a troublemaker once, Chris. Mm. I know it's gonna be it's gonna be a surprise to you, but I was accused of being a troublemaker once. I've been accused of being a troublemaker today. But I will uh, I will happily one day I'm gonna have to ride my bike to deliver Gabriel and I. But I don't know if he understands how much whiskey he's going to feed me after that. Mm. The, the, he's usually good for it. Um, Lucky Jack is asking, will you guys? I don't know how long we're going to do this. I got to play D&D &D tonight. Just so know, uh, we're really hoping to get them um, not next year. I'm I'm planning on the slight, we are planning on slight different route to get his knives, hopefully next Ooh. year. So as the, well, uh, his, the key, his son. Now it's going to break into his house and steal. Yeah, we'll, we'll break into his house. And tie the uh, muchan up. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we won't do that. No, we won't. Anyway, we're running out of time here. Right. Um, this go Don Penny's asking. Yeah, I got it. That's really important to me. I don't know if anyone knows that, but if I don't get to play pretend for a couple hours a week, 
that's where the holes in the walls turn up. So, um, Don, I'll answer any question for Don Penny, though. Mm -hmm. uh, he fought a shark one time and is a better cook than me. Just ask Kevin. Was well, his brisket um, for sure? Yeah, brisket for sure. I haven't cooked. You know what? I didn't cook a single brisket this year. There is there is a shark out in Hawaii that does show people and say, "This is my Don Penny bite." Yeah, yeah, Don Penny bit him. But to answer his question, come on, you're sco scooching past people. Um, I'll Don. Next time you come through the store, I'll show you some tricks for. Most knife bags will hold a 270 slicer quite comfortably. If you've got something bigger than that, I'll show you some couple a couple of tricks next time you roll through the store. Yeah. I don't want to get punched or bit like the shark did. Um, natural stones for the garage sale. We got a few natural stones kicking around. Do you get anything special in now, Toro? We got a still. I think we have a few. I haven't from... seen them arrive, but I haven't. I haven't unpacked every box, but I haven't seen them. Well, we had a few uh, Maroyama ones that may be still available. I have to double check. We got some Maroyama uh, stones came in. It was a couple months ago. That's right. We didn't save them for the garage, so they it, just kind of hit the. They just kind of hit the shelves. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sometimes that uh, happens. That is just awesome. real life. Sometimes, right? Sometimes our our warehouse team is just really good at being efficient. Mm -hmm. Great. I, think I, we can't still believe, have a few I can't though. believe I still have this stupid makeup on, Chris. <laughs> I just can't believe this. Last one. Ah, the Voog. The Voog wants me to go fight. You know what? I don't fight the bylaw people. <laughs> I understand that this seems like a kind of a shitty situation. He was you trying know? to get out of his car and he got a ticket. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's kind of funny. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, they're good at their job down around here. They'll get you. We warn you people all the time. In the in the uh, Edmonton store, they hide around the corner or something. I they oh, must yeah. because I came oh, parked, right I parked one time, threw my trunk open, grabbed a box, carried it into the shop, turned around and came out, and I had a ticket already. Ooh. Oh yeah, <laughs> and there was, and there oh, was no, they were the they're totally gone. They're killer. They're like like the John Wicks of handing out tickets around here. <laughs> they're <laughs> so super dark, efficient man. and deadly. <laughs> yeah. That's a good movie like, if you haven't watched it. Looks like we're at the end of the comments and questions. Yeah, I think so. That's great. Well, thanks. That's good. Thanks we're for amazing. For watching. And, yeah. Uh, thanks yeah. For watching. I don't know why you stuck around this long. We I will. Uh, we'll have the uh, <laughs> oh, another okay, live one. <laughs> we have another uh, episode. Well, not episode. The uh, live show in a uh, couple of days. Well, on a Friday. Yeah. And yep. Wednesday or on a Monday and Wednesday. And Sharp Knife Rock. On Friday, December Monday, 4th. Wednesday. Yeah. yeah. There's yeah. probably a Japanese Knife 101 tucked in there somewhere that Kevin and I are going to remember <laughs> 10 minutes before. The 16th. We got a, we got one on the 16th. Oh, wow. I'll and I don't know if it has a theme. Nathan, what's the theme That's for Knife 101 on the 16th? Uh, Christmas shopping. Oh, yeah. Christmas shopping. Oh, good. I know something about or that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, there are still a lot of knives that hasn't made it on the website and uh, there are i know there are more knives coming so just keep the and i know Nathan, knives I, know, I know that mason's been taking pictures like crazy yeah, yeah. so i think in the next couple of days you see like like the website's just going to explode for yeah. garage sale yeah. yeah which is great news yeah, yeah just anyway keep getting awesome. in there all right well i'm gonna go I play pretend rock and roll all, i want to rock and roll all night and i'm gonna have a party every day and i'm gonna scrub i'm gonna get a tawasi brush and see if i can yeah. Oh, <laughs> scrub this off. Can you Where post you a picture do? of your post, your post Tawashi brush face on uh, I am, on Twitter I am after? Going to look so fresh. Yeah, after, you're gonna after be after bleeding I one, after I get one of those ceramic plates and just rub my face. <laughs> oh, you oh, might that, need one. That's right here. Yeah, I don't know. Right I don't here. know if this is permanent or what. I don't know. Put some ginger in it first. That'll help get it off. Yeah, some jalapeno too. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. Jalapenos. <laughs> Jalapenos. Jalapenos. All right, I'm gonna go. Or I'm gonna get in trouble. Ready? Goodbye, everybody. Bye. Ciao. Bye everyone. Thanks for watching.